Hi, my name is Christian and I'm working as an engineer in Full Stack Energy. In this video, we will be talking about authorized action in OCCP 1.6 version. So basically, what is authorized? Authorized is a way to identify the user and either allow or disallow that user to charge. So before we will start a transaction, we need to know if that transaction is allowed or not. And the way to do it is to authorize. There are a few different ways how we can authorize the users. And usually that's in the public chargers, that's through RFID cards or mobile apps. So basically the idea is the same. If you have RFID physical card, you tap it on your charger and the number from that card goes to the charger and charger sends that ID to the central system. Central system might have its own way to identify or its own logic to either allow that user to charge or disallow. So basically that's all might depend on the payment system or paid invoices or any logic that central system has. But the idea is the same. You will have a RFID tag that you will send over to central system. Central system will do its own logic and it will return back to you to tell you if you are allowed to charge or if that user is allowed to charge. So let's try it now. I have my simulator open here. We used that simulator before in the previous videos. I will connect here and I will send the a kind of default hexadecimal code here, which is that beef here. So I will authorize now. And what I see here is this is the call that I sent over. So I have ID tag, that beef and the status is invalid. And the reason for that is my central system, it's not really telling me why it's invalid, but I know for sure that this RFID number doesn't exist in my central system. So let's go to the central system now. And we can create a new RFID card here. So I can generate a random number like this one. So we'll copy that and I can put it uh, as a virtual the same. And I can say do uh, say RFID for tutorial like this. So I can select a user, one of the users we have in our system, and I can select if that's our active or if that's a default RFID for that user. And I can use this here. Whenever I send it, uh, save it here, we can go back to the simulator. And now, instead of uh, having that dead beef, I can use the generated RFID here and authorize it once again. So once we send this ID tag, you see this one has been accepted. So the logic behind the central system is on the central system side. That means central system first validate if we have that RFID number in our database, if that number is associated with active user, if that active user has a proper payment set up on his account, and if that user has a car associated with that account as well. So basically that number was sent through the ch from the charger, and you, you might have that in two ways. You may even have it on physical RFID card, which is basically just a number that you, whenever you tap it will be sent over. Or you might have like a mobile application where you create your account and we will generate that or the, the central system will provide you the uh, ID card that you will have it in your app and your app will send it over to the central system to validate it. So basically that's how it works. We send over a request with some ID tag, and then we can have it either invalid or accepted. This is how it works in the, our setup with our simulator and our charge complete central system. If we go to the documentation here in the, I'm at the moment OCP 1.6 edition 2 PDF. Uh, if we scroll down, we have one of the methods here is authorize. So I can click on that and I can read about the authorization here. So basically you send out authorization request with ID tag and then you get back ID tag info. To uh, see the details of this, we can click on authorize request. You can read more about this here. The things that we need to send is the authorize request. And actually there is only one thing that we sent. It's ID tag and it's a type of ID token. And this is actually required. So we need to send that. So going back to my simulator, this is basically what we've done. So we have that payload here and we sent the ID tag here with a string like this and ID tag here, string like this. So ID token field type here, if we'll click on this, 
this is id token so basically it contains identity to use the for authorization it's a string 20 type that means a 20 character long string and it's case insensitive so basically you might have any character you like so usually the rfid tags are stored in a central system but it doesn't have to be on the central system you might have a local cache or you might have a local offline uh, list of the authorized users and a charger might not even send this request to the central system if charger is designed to get the list out of the central system and store it out for offline use as well but basically you need to have a way uh, to store users rfid numbers a unique number for that purpose to identify who is trying to charge a car so going back to beginning of it and i will click back on the authorize again and we have that authorized request and then in response to this we have id tag info so basically it's a, another object that we are uh, having that return so going back to the simulator we can see here we have that id tag info and that's another object here so let's take a look what the id tag info is going back to the documentation we can click on this one and ID tag info contains three things. Two are optional, which is expiry date and parent ID tag, and one is required. So required is status, and that's what we actually got it returned. So expiry date is basically you, the system might tell you when your tag expires uh, as a way to respond from the authorization action. But this is not needed, and then we can have parent ID, so you can have like IDs and parent IDs that will group more than one ID. But this status is required, and if we click on authorization status on this one, we have a few options that we, ne we need to have at return, either accepted, or invalid is the most popular one. Blocked or expired, it's kind of security risk at the moment because it gives a lot of information about the system. The blocked is tell you that the ID exists, but it has been blocked by the system and expired and basically tell you that there was a, a token RFID attack in the system with that string, uh, but has been expired. So basically, if you force the system to check different characters, you could actually have, uh, using the authorized method, you could have a lot of information going back if you will find the one that exists. So I think the safer way is to uh, you. Uh, use it either accepted or invalid and in that way it will just uh, tell you yes or no and that's what we have in a central system at the moment implemented and uh, rfid attacks we we have at the moment eight characters uh, here and they are using as a rfid but it doesn't have to be in that format so basically the format of rfid can be the it can be decided or can be any string that is uh, maximum 20 characters long and as i said it doesn't have to come from the physical card. It can come from the uh, mobile application as well. And if we want to start the transaction, we need to authorize our user first. And the way to do it is to use the authorize action in OCSP 1.6. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Thank you.